Hey there. Welcome to the first episode of my Bigfoot sighting. Sit back, relax, crack open a cold one, and enjoy the ride. Seen a bunch of run down no horse towns where the church is the backbone loves and the plow. And the five string melodies groove in. Where the roots run deep Beyond the noise of the busy streets Where the songs of the south are soothing When I hear the front porch picking down Home rhythm ringing out I don't run from banjo music Yeah My first Bigfoot sighting was when I was about 12 years old. This one is very clear to me. And it wasn't just me that encountered it. It was um, when I was out at my grandmother's place in uh, Arizona and um, on the Navajo Reservation. And about 17 to 19 miles east of a place called Kienta. And, um, it happened during the summertime and it was myself and about four of my cousins and um, my two brothers and my grandpa was there. He was babysitting us and it was kind of late and we had gotten done eating and cleaning up. And then my grandpa had told us that we all needed to get to bed and my grandmother, my mom, and my aunt, they had all gone to her sister's house. Um, they were needing some help with some stuff. So that's where they were at. And, the, and they were still over there kind of late. So my grandpa was kind of in, he was babysitting all of us. And so after we got done eating, cleaning up, you know, we're getting ready for bed. And of course, uh, as kids can be, you know, just being kind of naughty and a little obnoxious and being loud. And at the time, during the summer times, my grandpa likes to sleep outside in the shade house. That's where he usually likes to sleep. And um, that particular evening, there was a storm coming in. You could tell when I had gone outside, um, it was kind of blowing right before it, the storm comes in, the way it blows. Um, that's what was going on. And I could see far off to the north that um, it was pretty dark. Clouds were coming in. And you could see the lightning strike every every so often. And you could also smell the rain coming. So when we start getting ready for bed, my grandpa had come back inside. He was already outside, but then he came back in and he got after us because we're all being too loud and noisy and kind of playing around a little bit too much. And he wanted us all to get, get to bed. And he told us, um, you know, he says in Navajo, he gets after us and tells us to get to bed, that if we keep being too noisy, that we're going to attract a gorilla man. That's how they pretty much say Bigfoot in Navajo. Um, if you translate it exactly what the words are being used, it's pretty much gorilla man. So we all kind of got scared. But my cousins and my brothers, you know, I, I told them, I said, if you guys, if we all lay down and start going to bed, I'll tell you guys some stories. And my cousins on my mom's side knew that we would spend time out at my Nully's house, which is my dad's side of the family in Shanto. We've had quite a bit of experiences over there as well. Um, we've had some pretty scary times out there. So they wanted me to tell them a, a bedtime story, a scary story. So I told them, if you guys lay down, settle down, then I'll tell you the story. So with the setup of the house, the way that it was is my grandma's house, there was a hogan. And then attached to it on the north side, it was like a little square house, just a kind of like a one bedroom. And it had a kitchen and a bathroom. That's all that there was. And in between the square house and the Hogan, they had cut out a door, but there was no actual door there. It was just the, a walkway area. But if somebody wanted to put a door in there, they could, but nobody had put a door in there. It was just the walkway. So we had the light on in the Hogan. So it was kind of shining into the 
into the other room, but not bright enough, but still dark enough that we were all laying down and all my cousins and my little brothers were listening to me. And every now and then my cousin was kind of getting a little naughty. He kept kind of poking at his, his sister and she was getting mad at him. And so they were being a little loud and I, I, I had to keep reminding them, stop, be quiet. If you, if you want me to tell you the story, you got to be quiet and listen. So in the middle of me saying that to them, we heard something outside and around my grandma's house, the ground is so, it, it doesn't have loose sand or anything like that. It, the, the ground around her house is hard and there was like pebbles, a lot of small little gravel pebbles. So if you walk around outside, you can hear somebody if they're outside walking around or if a vehicle's pulling up, you can hear them on the gravel. So being outside around the house, if the window's open, you can hear a person walking around out there. Or even if the dog is walking by the house, something like that, you can hear them walk by. So at that very moment when I had told them to be quiet, we heard some footsteps outside. And I thought to myself, why is my grandpa on that side of the house? Because on that side of the house would be considered behind the house, like the backyard. And where my grandpa was at was sort of in the front yard towards the south where the shade house is. That's where he would be at. So it would be on the com- exactly completely on the opposite side of where we were laying and on the side of that, the, the house. And, um, then I just thought, well, maybe he's just walking around checking, checking the house or something. But at the, at that time too, we had the windows open. The windows were open. There was a screen in the window. And every so often the curtain would fly up when the, the wind would blow hard enough for it to fly up. So you could smell the rain too. And that was one thing too that was really weird. At first, you could really smell the rain. It smelled really good. But then all of a sudden, there was this really funky smell. It, it's, it, it, it just kind of hard to describe the way that it smells. It's, it's just foul smelling. Um, kind of like someone that hasn't showered in so long or something, you know, just the, the stench of it really stunk. All of a sudden, there was that smell. And then my cousins were being a little naughty. And I told them, you know, quiet down. You want me to finish telling you a story? You got to listen. And and the moment when I was telling them that, that's when we heard those footsteps. And then I kind of dismissed it and thought, well, it's my grandpa, you know, walking around back there. So I started to talk again, to start telling the story again, when all of a sudden, you know, every now and then the lightning would strike. So the sky would light up. And in that very moment, the wind blew hard enough for the curtain to blow up. And then the lightning struck at that very same time. And all of a sudden, right there where we were all laying, there was a couple of us laying on the floor on a mattress. And then beside it was a bed with a mattress, of course. And so we were all laying on those two areas is where we were laying and we were kind of, we were facing the window. So our feet was towards the window and we could see the window as well. So when that all happened and we smelled that, and I do remember my cousin saying, Ooh, stink, something smells. And he started kind of laughing, saying that somebody fart and the kids are kind of like laughing and stuff. But at the same time, it really stunk. And my other cousin's like, that really stinks. It's worse than a fart. So when that happened, the lightning struck, the sky lit up. And when the sky lit up and we were all looking at that wind at the window at the very moment, the curtain flew up. There was something big and hairy standing there. And we could not see the top of the head, just probably like halfway, halfway between the the top of the head and the the chin area and all the way downwards. 
So the window was big enough for us to just kind of see that area. We couldn't see the top of the head, but we saw that and it was facing and looking in right at us. And we were all shocked. I mean, it was literally right there, just right behind the house, right? If if it reached forward, it probably could have pushed the screen in. And once we saw that, my cousin's sister, she screamed. And my cousin's sister is about three years younger than me. And she screamed. Once she screamed, we all started yelling and we all jumped up. And we started running towards, we ran into the Hogan. And we're all screaming and yelling. And some of us were crying. And then all of a sudden, we heard some banging at the front door. and. We got scared even more. More crying was going on. More screaming was going on. And then all of a sudden, you know, the the, the door handle started jiggling. And the, the door was moving back and forth, too. And then I heard my grandpa. And then Navajo, he says, open the door. He was saying, open the door. What's going on in there? So we realized it was my grandpa. So I opened it. I unlocked the door. And I, I opened it up and he came in and then he turned around. He closed the door. He locked it. As soon as he used the deadbolt up on top to, to, to lock the door, just then there was a loud bang and the door was hit and pushed at the same time. So something, if it was Bigfoot, that's who it was walked around, heard my grandpa on the other side of the house coming to us. And as soon as that door was shut, he banged on that door and shook the door hard enough that it rattled. And we were just all in shock. And my grandpa right there, you know, he told us to, um, he told me I was the oldest, told me to hurry up and go close those windows. Oh gosh, I was so scared. I was so, so, so scared. Um, I took my brother and my other cousin and we went into the other room and I just hurry up and I shut those windows as fast as I could. And then we got away from in there. We turned, we shut the light off and we just kind of all sat there in silence. And especially my cousin brother, the one that kept making noise, he was so quiet. It wasn't a peep out of him. He just sat there and, 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 and then finally, Maybe 15 minutes later, the truck pulled back up and it was my mom and my grandma and them. So that was a, one of my very first encounters of actually seeing that and, and, and seeing that figure in the window. And the second encounter that I have was actually in Kanta area and where I lived was in a housing area and in that housing area it's a three bedroom one one bath and my bedroom was in the corner and it was a well, I would say it was probably in the month of September late September and I was sitting there reading and it was a weekend it was like a Saturday it was I remember it was a Saturday and I was sitting there reading and I didn't have anything on. I didn't have no, no music playing, no TV, nothing. It was just me sitting in my room with the lights on and me reading a book. And I was sitting on my bed and I did have my window open and I didn't have a screen on my window. So basically, if I want to look out the window, I could throw something out the window because there's no screen there. Or if somebody wanted to throw something in the window, it would fall into my room. And But um, this night, I was sitting there reading, and I was into my book. And all of a sudden, I just got this weird feeling that I wasn't alone. And I know I wasn't alone in the house. Um, my, fa- my mom was home, and my brothers were home. But I had my door closed, and I was sitting there reading. And then all of a sudden, my curtain 
my curtains were closed and my curtains were, were thick enough as well that you can't just see into my room even during the uh, at night with the lights on you can't see into my room or I couldn't see out if my lights were off and I was looking outside and the street lights are on I wouldn't be able to see out but all of a sudden I got that feeling of just not being alone and I got that that stench again that that smell it just smelled like it, it's just hard to describe it it's just this really funky smell it just stunk I smelled that and I was a lot older at that time. I think I was 16 then. And when I smelled that, I, it brought me back to that time that was out at my grandma's house and we saw that figure in the window. And the moment I thought of that, all of a sudden my curtain started moving like somebody was pushing it forward that my curtain was going up. And I just sat there in silence for a moment and it felt like 10 minutes went by, but it wasn't 10 minutes. It was just like maybe 30 seconds or something. And I sat there frozen, not knowing what to do because, you know, I, I wouldn't know who would be trying to get my attention at the window. And I, I just sat there. I didn't know what to do. And then it stopped. The curtains went all the way down. And I just sat there thinking, what do I do? Do I get up? Do I look out the window or do I go out? But I was so afraid of getting up because if I got up and I walked to the door, I would have to walk directly in front of the window where if they moved the curtain open, then I would see what is standing there. That was what scared me the most is seeing whatever was on the other side of the window. So I sat there for another minute wondering, okay, it stopped. Is it gone? And next thing you know, my curtain flew up again. And at the moment that it flew up, I just jumped up off my bed and I ran out the door. As I did that, I could see in my peripheral on my, on my, on my left side, I could see on my peripheral that an arm came in and the arm was dark. It wasn't, it wasn't like a human arm. It was like a hairy arm and it was dark. It, it's, it scared me. I just ran out the door. I didn't even wait to to stop and look I didn't want to look I didn't want to see um because I've had other experiences where I've seen other things that were unexplainable that I had never seen before that I didn't understand what it was and that was way when I was younger like about 10 years old so I didn't ever want to see anything un that's not something normal for me to normally see so when I had ran out, thankfully my mom was in her room, which was right in front of, um, right, right, um, across from me, across the hallway from me. And I just ran right into her room and I had slammed my door shut too. And I told her, there's something in, there's something outside. There's something outside. I don't know if it's in my room now. And. So my stepdad, he went outside and he went around the house and um, he said he, he had heard something um, walking away. And he said it, he he said he felt weird. And um, there was some tracks in front of my window, but you couldn't really tell what it was. Because I'm, I'm in front of my window, the ground is so hard as well, too, that um, the sand isn't soft enough to where you could leave a footprint or or any kind of prints. And you could tell what it was. It was just an indention. And, and it was like the ground was just cracked. But you couldn't tell an actual outline of what type of if it was a shoe or anything. And but it was pretty big. 
you could tell it was pretty big. And the, <laughs> and what they, what we found in my room, um, which was so weird and I just couldn't understand why it would be in there was, um, it was a piece of wood. And I don't know why it was a piece of wood in there, but there was a piece of wood in my room. So that was another encounter I had. And then there's a, another one that I have of my aunt. My mom has a, she comes from a family of 11 kids and her younger siblings, they've kind of seen things and maybe even my aunts, my uncles, my older, my, my older aunts and uncles, I'm sure they've seen stuff and heard things too, but they didn't always share a lot of stuff with us. But my, my younger two aunts and my younger uncle, they, they used to be a little bit more open about things and talk about stuff. And they would talk about experiences. And my two aunts, they've had experience, a really, really bad experience once with the, with an actual skinwalker. And I could probably tell at a later time in another show or something, but my aunts, the encounter they had with the Bigfoot, my aunt was actually, um, they had put a tent up out at my grandma's house and she was sleeping in there. And I'm not sure what time of the night it was, but it was summertime. I know that for sure because it was warm enough for them to be sleeping in the tent. and. And I was about maybe 12, 11 or 12 years old. And I was asleep in the, in the Hogan with my grandparents. And my mom was actually there too that weekend. And my aunt came running into the house. Like she literally, the doors were locked. The door was locked, but she, ran so hard and so fast that she literally blew the door down. She swung that door open so fast and so hard. She was screaming and crying. And um, she said that, well, she stayed in that tent with her boyfriend. Her, her and her boyfriend were in that tent. And she said her boyfriend got out. And he went out to use the restroom. And, and then she said she felt like he came back in and, laid back down beside her or something and but she said that all of a sudden she said she smelled something really smelly and she didn't know what that smell was it really really was just smelly and she said whatever it was that came into the tent with her which she didn't she felt it she didn't see it but she heard it and she smelled it um, she said that she was laying there and she thought her boyfriend had gone. Sh when he went out of the tent, he went straight out, like out in, in front of the tent and not behind it because the outhouse was, um, north of the tent. And so she figured, you know, that he wouldn't be back, but it was like almost all of a sudden he was back pretty quick. And she just thought, wow, that was really fast. Did you actually go to the outhouse or what? And she said that the tent really moved. And the, right before it really moved, um, she heard footsteps from behind the tent and it went around the front. And she said that the tent literally all moved the whole thing when, when, she thought it was her boyfriend that came in. The whole tent moved with him coming in. Like he literally moved the whole tent coming in. And she said there was just this really heavy odor that smells so bad. And she said there was this like a heavy breathing. And she didn't, she knew at that moment that breathing wasn't her boyfriend. And she said she just froze. She was laying on her side. She was laying to, she was laying facing away from her boyfriend. 
So whatever it was that sat bes- behind her, and I, I would assume that it's it's a Bigfoot because she said that when she jumped up and she got out of that tent, she felt hairiness and she said she felt that the body was big and just the smell and kind of the breath of it and and the breathing she said she knew it wasn't human and she just screamed she just ran right out of there she just jumped out and darted out of the tent and that's when she just flew right through the front door and she was screaming and crying and that's what happened. And, and here, right before this all happened, her boyfriend, he did go to the outhouse. And when he came back, he came into the house to wash his hands and to get a, a bottle of water to take it back to the tent because my aunt asked for water. So he came in the house and, and I, I don't, uh, it was just a habit too as well for everybody during when you come into the house, you lock the door. It was just a habit. And when he came in, he locked the door. And he was busy washing his hands, doing what he needed to do. And while he was walking back to the front door to open it and to go back out to my aunt, that's when my aunt came flying through the door. Literally almost blew him over too. And she was screaming and crying and She said there was something in the tent with her. And so my uncle grabbed the, he grabbed the rifle and my uncle, her boyfriend and my grandpa, they all went outside. And um, her boyfriend is the one that had seen it and it was off in the distance. And what he described had looked like just some, somebody tall and big and that smell wasn't as bad but it was still kind of stunk and it was near the um, sheep corral when he had seen it so that was my aunt's encounter that she had um, experienced and that I know of and then one other one other time that I experienced something where I feel that it was Bigfoot also still again was out at my grandma's place. And this was when I was an adult. I think I was about 27, 28 years old. And I had decided to go out to my grandma's to visit her. And it was mid afternoon. I went out there to go see her and sat with her for the afternoon, talked with her, had a good visit. And it was about time for me to leave. And at that time, I had two girls. And I got my girls in the car. And we were about to leave. And um, I, I had forgotten to get drinks for my daughters. So I ran back in the house grabbed them drinks and said bye again one more time to my my grandma and then um I went out went out got in the car and we started we left and it was it was getting dark by the time we were leaving so by the time that we actually got on the main dirt road it was pretty dark and it just felt weird you know I felt like the moment that I got into the the vehicle that was I just felt like I was being watched. And from where my grandma lives to get to the main dirt road, um, it would take I don't know, maybe three, four minutes to drive. And you can't really drive so fast either. So it took me a couple of minutes to get to the main dirt road. And in that time I felt like something was watching us. And it just made me feel so uneasy. And I was by myself with just my girls. And instead of having our windows down, I just rolled them up. And my daughter was like, Mom, it's hot. Can we just leave the window down? I was like, no, we'll we'll just turn on the cooler. <laughs> I didn't want to 
roll the windows down and you know even though it was cool enough to have the windows down and let the cool air come in I didn't want to do that like I said I felt like there was something watching us and even following us and when we got to the main dirt road and I turned on to the the main dirt road I just saw feet it was I turned when I turned onto the dirt road my headlights it went across the the bushes and then onto the dirt road and all of a sudden it when the lights were on the dirt road, it was like, like it was standing there waiting for me to shine the light on it. And it was just in, in the headlights. I mean, just right where, where the light ends and the darkness begins, just right there at the edge and the feet moved. And right there, I, I knew there was something and it was just like, like a big old eight, eight feet. That's what I saw. And it was just like it wanted to show its legs or its feet. And then that was it. And it was pretty dark. And since I was on the main dirt road, the main dirt road was graded. So there weren't very many wash. It wasn't a washboard or anything like that. It just had been graded. So it was almost like driving on the highway, sort of, but on dirt road. So as soon as I saw that, and my oldest daughter, she saw it too. And she's like, what is that? And I just said, I don't know. We're getting out of here. But at the same time, I was afraid for my grandparents because it wasn't far from my grandparents' house. I mean... It would literally was maybe 300 yards from my, my grandma's house, something like that. Maybe that 300 yards isn't accurate. I'd say about a good football field and a half away from where we saw that to my grandma's house. And I was so afraid of leaving and, and just my grandparents were there. So I was kind of in a dilemma of just taking off and leaving or should I turn around? And because I love my grandparents so much, I looked at my daughters and said, we're going to go back and let your grandparents know or at least check on them, make sure that they're okay. So we turned around and then we went back to my grandma's place. And as we were pulling up, you know, I was really looking around. At least I made sure the high beam was on so that way we could see as much as we could. And I made sure that I made a big circle as well so that I could see around the perimeter of my grandma's house. And my grandma was curious why we came back. She was looking out the door window. She was at the door looking out the window. And I was so scared, <laughs> but I mustered all the courage together and I made sure I told my daughter, I said, lock the door. When I get out, you lock the door. And I said, if you see me running back, you hurry up and unlock the door so I can get in. So she was ready and I got out, she locked the door and I hurry up and I ran up to the front door and my grandma opened it. It was almost like on cue. She knew something was up because I was running to the door. And as soon as I got to the front door, she opened it and I went in. She closed it. And she was she asked me, Navajo, what's going on? Are you okay? And I told her, no, you know, I just, I saw this. I don't know what I saw, but I saw something and not too far from the house over here. And she just kind of chuckled a little bit and said that they would be okay. That wasn't the first time. So at least I, I think my grandparents were kind of used to something being around there. And she just, she said that it was, that it was just their friendly gorilla man and that it wouldn't do anything. So that was shocking for me to hear her say that. <laughs> and she said she, 
she already left out some some apples and that they would be okay. So that was my last encounter that I remember. Well, that's it for tonight's show. If you've had a Bigfoot sighting and would like to be a guest, please go to mybigfootsighting.com and let us know. Thanks for listening. Have a great night. Seen a bunch of run-down no-horse towns Where the church is the backbone, loves and the bow And the five-string melodies groove in With the farmland rows where the roots run deep Beyond the noise of the busy streets Where the songs of the south are soothing When I hear the front porch picking down home rhythm ringing out I don't run from banjo music yeah.